Okay, I have here my 1965 Gillig Schooly. Notice the three-point hitch in the front bumper. Sturdy enough you could park one of those little uh, compact mini cars right on a deck there. It has a partial conversion to RV. I'll illustrate the things that are done in the direction it's headed. Let's go up in. Notice the latches on the door. They're really nice. We made Katie bar latches, so this thing locks up like a safe. Stored a lot of valuable goods in it over the years. Nice little padlock there. Boom, the other side's just the same. The two posts key in to the frame. There and up there. Hold it together really good. Uh, last I checked, that heater there worked. It has CB. Uh, it's a Fuller five-speed manual. It has an air ride captain seat there. Um, let's see. I do believe all of the gauges work. Uh, you've got a, a throttle lock here. Um, all that good stuff, bunch of switches and things, most of which work pretty good. Even a little air brake, exhaust air brake here system that works. You've got your visible warning of a low air pressure condition. Uh, what else we got here? Okay, let's turn around and look at the look at the cabin. Okay, well there's there's the galley. There's the bedroom. All of that. So you got this nice uh, propane four burner stove. Really happy. Um, this nice counter, massive counter surface area because I'm big into cooking. Come from a big family. You've got a nice little mini fridge, modern. Uh, I have measured its power consumption. It's like one quarter of a kilowatt hour a day, so that this, this would be really easy to run on a solar panel. Boom chakalaka. Nice capacity in it. Uh, we've got a uh, nice uh, two deep tub stainless sink. Some metal drawers, a porcelain commode, boom chakalaka, mm -hmm. uh, oh and this is the floor plan I was building toward. So you got the queen bed in the back, you've got a place to sit down and put on your shoes, you've got a shelf above you, you have a his and a hers closet, over the wheel wells uh, where you walk through into the bedroom area is a large two-person shower with misters around it like uh, in the grocery section of a store we have the uh, wood stove the cargo door the cargo space which goes all the way through here as you see as we're looking about chunk mirror there has a really nice queen pillow top bed and we've got several thick foam pads for making the seats and seat pads and guest bunk pads uh, got a little spare tin the nice thing about this stuff is it has this molded bump just like the side of the bus does now here we have this hasty heat RV wood stove here. This thing's actually pretty cool. It, uh, you can you know, fry your bacon right there with a pan. You can broil your pizza or whatever right in there. Um, there's your tinderbox. Uh, 
So here's the little window. You can watch it burn from the galley, from the dining area. So it opens up like this. And the nice thing about this is it uh, tends to leave you some nice charcoal that makes it really easy to restart. It has this uh, hot air comes in through here. The hot air blows over the exhaust air and comes in through there. And it's so superheated that the air blowing here is hot enough to ignite the wood. Yeah, I pegged that gauge. Uh, so the exhaust goes up into the cyclone here where it makes a really nice sweeping 90 degree turn. Goes down along this pipe. This is also the clothes hanger. So you hang all your clothes here. It keeps them nice and dry and clean and fresh. Then it hits another cyclone where it spins and goes out the side of the bus. We have an intake fan here that uh, blows through this center tube where the air preheats all the way down here and blows into the combustion chamber where it goes boom. So uh, super clean burning. Uh, I think I measured somewhere close to a six or seven hour burn on a, a 16 inch long piece of four by four. All right, now the dining area, rather than building my own wooden boxes in place, I decided to go with these totes uh, for the reason of being able to maximize the cargo space at a whim. So they're set up to just take a piece of plywood between them like that with the seat cushions, the materials over there. You make a seat cushion for here and here. That also, all those totes lay out and make the guest bunk. So you got your dining area there, you can sit, lean back there. Uh, also, you could take down the whole dining area and stack all the totes and everything up right here, and then you just had this massive cargo volume all the way up to uh, where you would get to the wheel wells here, which you'd have your sliding pocket doors with your shower and your his and hers closets. And then a little corner room, a little corner room would be put around the commode as depicted in the drawing. So we can get bicycles, kayaks, hell, I've even had most of a airplane, including its 22 foot wings in here because that rear window opens up so you can fit long objects in through the center up to 35 feet long. You can carry your own hang glider or whatever. Okay, so let's step back and get a good view from the bunk area. There we go. So from the bunk area, you got your wood stove, you got your dining area, you got your galley, and you got your dressers. Those dressers, again, uh, the theme here is rather than permanent structures inside, movable structures so that the use of the bus can be modified at a whim as needed as situation in life changes. Uh, you know, a very classy uh, uh, place to live, as well as the ability to earn a little bit of money using one of those uh, Android apps for hauling people's goods to and fro. Help, they could help pay you to see the country. Uh, with the Fuller 5-speed manual that this bus has, uh, it gets near 10, 11 miles a gallon. It's quite amazing, really, for a 12-liter diesel engine, industrial diesel. Um, plenty of power. I've pulled heavy loads with the trailer hitch in the rear. It has a Class 3 Plus trailer hitch in the rear. Uh, let's go ahead and start this thing up. Oh, keys are back here. Let's go ahead and start this thing up. Now this thing hasn't been started in uh, like, shoot, six months or so. So this is a completely unprimed cold start. So turn that on there, I think. Make sure I'm in neutral. We'll also see how long it takes for the uh, air here. Yeah, the air pressure to build up because that's important to the condition. Here we go. How about them apples? Pressure's 
building. We've got oil pressure, water temperature works, fuel gauge might not work. I believe speedometer works, tachometer works. Most of the lights work, uh, but probably need to be cleaned again. About every time I take this thing out of storage to go on a run, I you know, have to address the uh, old light fixtures. Uh, you replace things with LED bulbs, it would help immensely. We're already passing 50 PSI, and it's just at idle. I'm not even helping it. This is a great running rig. Gotta go ahead and move it back anyway, so let's get the sun shades out. Yeah, I gotta move it back so I can get rid of that T-post. Here, I'll even, well, I, yeah, I'm waiting on air. Okay, we're past 60, so we now have enough air to move. 